Greg. Parents who love their children won a big victory in Maine late last week when a bill that would have turned the state into a sex change sanctuary failed. Maine State Representative and Victory News guest Katrina Smith expressed the solidarity of state Republicans with Maine's parents. This legislation was introduced quietly and under the cloak of a busy session last year. The people of Maine, the people of this country, do not want this bill. They are asking us at gas stations, at grocery stores, is this really true? Is this really going to happen? And we stand here together to say, not on our watch. The Safeguarding Gender Affirming Care Act died in committee with all 12 state senator judiciary minute, member, committee members voting against sending it to the floor for a full vote. The victory kept Maine from becoming a trans tourism surgery state for minors stripping parental rights away from the parents. Our next guest is the executive director of the Alabama Eagle Forum and a champion for families and the protection of their children. Becky Gerritsen, welcome to Victory News. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, thank you. A wave of parental protests to Maine legislators put a stop to a bill that would have turned that state into a sanctuary for trans minors seeking medical procedures, stripping away rights from the parents. Becky, why has this become such a political war so quickly in our society? This is incredible what we are seeing, but this is just a ploy from decades long war to tear families apart to sterilize our children. Um, it's all kind of rolled into one, but this, we saw such an explosion during COVID that these children that have gender dysphoria, which is a real thing, um, we have seen a humongous skyrocket amount of children that are coming down with this gender dysphoria. Um, there's no medical test that can be done to tell. This is all a child's diagnosis. And they decide they're born in the wrong body and boom, they move on to get drugs. Okay, now earlier this month, the state of Alabama had its own victory for children and parents when the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals lifted a lower court's injunction against the state's Vulnerable Child Compassion and Protection Act. Tell us what that means for Alabama families and the health of children who are simply confused about gender. This is a wonderful thing for children in Alabama. They can now focus on the mental sides of why they are experiencing gender dysphoria and get to the bottom of it versus being put on drugs. It's so important for your viewers to understand that these drugs cause children to be sterile. Um, and these are young children. They don't have the ability to make this kind of decision, but it halts their social growth, their sexual growth. It even uh, impacts their intellectual growth and it, has big time implications for physical problems that would happen on down the line. This is not irreversible. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask you. That's good to know, it's not irreversible. Now, an OBGYN student at the Medical College of Wisconsin shared this eye-opening testimony recently. Here it is. I think when somebody finds out in pregnancy, when or how far along that they are when someone finds out, they should be able to get an abortion if they want to. If I can't get abortion training here, if I can't perform abortions in my career, I will not stay in Wisconsin. Now, she said her fellow classmates want conception to birth abortion all the time as well. Becky, do you think this uh, anti-life belief is because of medical training today or because of her generation's culture? I think it's more than just her generation. I think this is decades long battle against life. And we, we see how there, there isn't much sanctity of life anymore. So I, I think it is definitely something that's been coming down the pike for a long time and it's sad. All right, you've become a little bit of a legend for speaking truth to power with the following statement. I'll quote you, I'm a born free American woman, wife, mother, and citizen, and I'm telling my government you've forgotten your place, end quote. What prompted you to say that? And do you think Washington still needs to hear that? Yes, this was uh, almost 11 years ago when the IRS came after Tea Party groups and would not allow them to apply for um, nonprofit status, just like any other organization. And it is even worse today. They, yes, government needs to hear that. Yeah, okay. I want you to tell us about Eagle Forum of Alabama, its mission. Eagle Forum of Alabama has been around since the 1970s. And our goal is to advocate for good public policy that promotes and protects the family. Becky Gerritsen, and she's with alabamaeagle.org. That's how people can find out about you and, uh, and yes. check it out. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.